Hi guys, Ron here and welcome to the workshop. Today it is time to build my gravel bike as well, again from Factor Bikes. So this is the frame itself. It's the brand new updated LS gravel bike. Unlike my previous gravel bike, this is purposefully designed for gravel racing and it has a couple of features to match. So it has, first of all, subtle aero shapes, which always helps. And particularly in long gravel events, the, uh, in that case, definitely the gains do add up. The frame itself is really light compared to gravel frame, around 900 grams. This is the brand new uh, classic blue paint job and it's really striking and unusual, just like my Austro Vam road bike. So I'm happy we went with this direction. The frame is compatible with both electronic and mechanical drivetrains, which is a bit of a difference compared to my road frame, which is electronic only. Also, it doesn't have fully integrated brake hose routing and it uses a standard round seat post. Otherwise, the frame is typically factor. You can see that from the shape. You do get a couple of attachments for accessories. So you have this top tube um, bag mount, but no real bike packing style uh, attachments anywhere on the frame. As I said, this is a race frame to begin with. The down tube is a very large section, again, kind of a truncated shape or a bit more of a box section actually. Huge bottom bracket area, the T47 a bottom bracket shell. This is an update from the previous version, which was BB right. This is essentially the same uh, size, but in a threaded version, so it's more reliable doesn't rely on the tolerances of the press fit so it should make things easier to work on which is a bonus of course we're talking about riding off-road here uh, then we have also the other features you get from factor bikes so replaceable threaded inserts in both the fork and uh, the rear through axle flat mount disc brakes of uh, course as I said, this is an update from the previous version of the LS. So apart from the bottom bracket area, which got threads, it's also uh, been shaved off by around 50 grams in the weight. So that's a nice improvement to have as well. On the down tube, you also have the port in case you run mechanical uh, drivetrains, which we're not doing in this case, but I'm going to talk about that in a moment. And if you decide to run one by, you can also remove the front Mac hanger for a clean setup. Another typical factor feature are the very thin and dropped um, chain stays. And even though the seat post has a round standard diameter, the frame doesn't have routing for dropper posts, so it's not the rowdy end of the gravel bike spectrum, so it's no half mountain bike really. It's a proper and gravel race bike with very road-like geometry, which is ideal for me. Low stack, long reach, so very close to my road bike setup and position. And the seat post itself is held in place by a similar wedge design like you do get on the road frames. So that's pretty much all about the frame. Let's talk about the components we're going to use for this one. So it's a uh, a bit of a similar way than I used with the road bike. The group set in this case will be the de dedicated Shimano GRX Di2. I want the upgrade the rear Mac with the SLF motion oversized pulley wheel cage for minimum friction. But I did add a cup, couple drops of grease. As you can see, they're not spinning that freely. That's just to make them more sturdy and to increase the longevity in harsh conditions. So that's the rear Mac. The front Mac is also GRX, which is a bit of a gamble for me because I'm going to use road chain rings and cranks. Now, this is a slightly modified version of the Ultegra front Mac and it brings the whole setup outboard by two and a half mil, which means that in theory, they say it's not the best to use this with road, road cranks, but um, the road Altagraph front neck was not available at the time I wanted to build the spike, so 
I went with this one. We'll see how that goes regarding the setup. But in my opinion, I will be able to make it work, even if you need some spacer or something. Then for the brakes, I have a couple of Durace brake calipers with the hoses. And these will be operated by the Shimano GRX DI2 levers, which I think are the best looking levers in all of cycling. Uh, they have an updated ergonomic shape. They use servo wave, which I haven't really used. Uh, previously, it was only available on the mountain bike brakes from Shimano. It has this aggressively textured rubber hood and a, quite a distinct shape compared to other units. And now the extra programmable button has moved to the side, which you get on top, otherwise on the road versions. So that's the group set pretty much covered. I already touched on the cranks. Uh, these are the rotor Alto 30s, which I've already shown you in my power meter video. Again, outfitted with the Partimax NG Eco power meter, spider based, of course, the best kind of power meters you can get for a bike. Very important for me to complement my training. The axle is 30 mil, as the name suggests. And the chain rings, as I already touched on, these are 5236 Altegra chain rings. Now, usually people tend to run smaller chain rings on gravel, but I find that with the average speeds I'm doing, it's well close to what some amateur riders are riding on the road, so around 25 to 30 k's per hour, and sometimes even more. So with that, a 52 really is a boost to efficiency. And the 36 is a pretty low gear. I will be using the Shimano AG800 cassette. So that's an 1134. And 36 to 34 gives me a very, very low gear. So should be plenty even for relatively steep off-road climbs. For the bottom bracket, I have the Ceramic Speed T47 threaded asymmetric bottom bracket, just like on the Ostro VAM. Uh, then for the pedals, I have the Speedplay Pave Titanium. This is a pretty rare product actually. It's a full steel version of the regular Speedplay Zero with this little cutaway to enable mud to clear out when you clip in. And I really like these pedals because it's essentially a road pedal that can sort of go off-road. I don't ride very technical mountain bike style descents or stuff that I need to get off the bike. So this has done a very good job until now. So I'm sticking with that. Uh, stems, I have these two stems. This is 130, this is 140. I will measure the bike up with the handlebar in place and then I'll decide which one to go with to closely match my road position. So that's up for debate still. I'm going to use the same fabric uh, saddle that I'm using on a road bike. I find it very comfortable. So that's a keeper. Then we have a couple of small spaces and accessories. Uh, the bike on gravel can take quite a bit of beating, so I'm going to apply protective foil on key areas of the frame just to keep it nice and neat. You also do get this rubberized chainstay protector, which I'm also going to put on. For the not so competitive outings, I'm going to use this little lead out bar bag to take uh, some filming equipment, etc., to show you places where I get to ride. Uh, then, as a finishing touch, I'm going to use the Silk and Astro uh, Piloti bar tape. This is a very thin one that I really like. I have pretty small hands, so I like thin bar tape, even off road gives me better sense of control. I use this one on a road bike, so I'm sticking with it on a gravel bike. The difference being that it's black for practicality reasons. Then we have a couple of small parts for the DI2 setup. Nothing unusual there. This is a little box you get with the frame set, as you can see. And you find a couple of things here. So. You do get spacers and the transition kit in case you use the black ink integrated bar and stem. 
you do get uh, the cable port in case you run mechanical. Uh, you do get a spare derailleur hanger, a couple of rubber grommets and uh, cable stops again in case you use mechanical. Then you get an expander plug, of course the headset which is already installed. And on top of that I have ordered a couple of direct mount derailleur hangers which are a lot neat solution if you are using Shimano rear max which I'm going to do. Then the seat post we have is the black ink 27.2 400 mm seat post. This is a pretty neat unit with setback so again to match my position from the road bike and it has a battery installed in there already with this rubber attachment so hopefully that will stay input and finally as a bit of a special touch I have ordered these <laughs> yeah that's it I've ordered these Silka Securo titanium bottle cages the reason uh, that I decided to go with these is that I, f I found out during my winter training that if you have carbon cages and you ride in gritty conditions of road the dirt and the sand and mud particles tend to accumulate between the bottle and the cage and then they gradually wear out the carbon so then it no longer holds the bottle very securely and with these ones hopefully that shouldn't be the case so that's a bit of a top tip from me I guess and also if you're going on really rough terrain you can always just bring it metal you can always just bend it back to make it a little bit more secure but it's pretty tight already when I tried it with my bottles so yeah uh, that's probably all the parts covered I don't have the wheels just yet and the handlebar but that should come today and the wheels should come by the end of the week and by that time I want to have the bike built so it's ready to go so Without further ado, let's get into it.
Okay guys, the bike is now actually ready and built up and I've even done my first ride on it since I finished it yesterday after the wheels have arrived so I took the chance and immediately got out on it. It was just a recovery ride so uh, not much uh, in it really but I managed to get some observations and some things I needed to adjust so let's talk you through the whole build and how the bike turned out. Okay, so here we have it. I think it looks pretty awesome, to be honest. I really like this paint job. At first, um, just as with the Ostra, I wasn't sure, but actually I think I like this one even more. But anyway, whole bike looks great and rides great, more importantly. So let's just check out a couple of other details. As usual starting on the front of the bike so the only part that was missing for a couple of weeks or they had Vanquish or sorry no these are actually had Emporia uh, GC3 Pro wheels so gravel specific uh, what does that mean well they have a hookless speed which is great for tubeless and they're wider than the road offerings as well and yeah, they're just massive to be honest compared to everything else. Compared to heads road wheels, mm, yeah, wasn't that surprising. But compared to everything else, they're pretty damn wide. So uh, that's nice for the support of the wider tires. Hookless, as I said, on gravel, that's actually a good thing because the rim is much tougher. And here, since you have no suspension, you have to rely on soft tires to give you that and yeah with soft tires pinch flats and bottom outs on the rims can happen so it's good to have it as sturdy as possible and of course it also helps with a tubeless seal so yeah that's what it is the rim width is 26 mil the depth is around 30 so pretty shallow but it does have a subtle aero shape although really with tires this wide and the knob is on there you can't really do magic in terms of aero efficiency the hubs are the same great hubs that are used in the vanquish line so that's nice and these wheels actually unlike the road wheels they came pre-taped and with a valve installed so i just put the tires on and the tire inserts more importantly which I'm going to talk about in a sec, but yeah, it was a very straightforward setup. I just had to inflate it, put the sealant in, and it was done in 15 minutes or so for both. So happy with that. I don't really like taping tubeless wheels, so uh, I was happily surprised with that. Mm, one thing that is missing though is my usual white head decals with these black ones. It's just a bit dull and it would nicely match the white factor logo so i'm going to change those to white uh, in a bit of a time and talking about tire inserts i've already tried them on the open uh, gravel bike which i had and i really like them because uh, even if you flat you can ride the tire completely flat and it's actually pretty decent and pretty rideable. So that's one thing and secondly as I said it protects the tire and the wheel from impacts so you can run lower pressures which is quite a lot faster and more comfortable. Speaking about pressures, uh, as I said these rims are very wide so it makes the tires also very wide. So I started out with a 30 psi pressure for the front 32 at the back but I think I can still go quite a bit lower because it felt a bit harsh because of the increased volume so that's something I need to work on another interesting thing are the spokes which are round in this case and yeah one more thing that comes to mind with the uh, with the tire inserts if you're just riding along probably not massively important unless you ride something rough but I'm planning to race this bike 
and if you're racing on gravel uh, you have to follow the wheels and you just can't pick your line that well so that also means a great chance of smashing into stuff which you would otherwise not smash into and i think for that um, the extra security of the insert is unbeatable uh, yeah that was a lot of talk about tires and wheels but um, let's be honest gravel uh, is a big part of that so let's just move on to the other stuff so as i have explained already i'm using the grx di2 group set which is pretty damn amazing to be honest i really like the levers as i said best looking levers in the business in my opinion at least very comfortable as well uh, one thing that disappointed me slightly is the lack of reach adjustment this is actually the closest you can get which is i think a bit further than on the road version and for most people it's probably not an issue and normally it's not an issue for me either except with these MV bars which for some reason have this weird drop shape and it makes me quite or gives me quite a hard time to reach the brake levers so it's not ideal but yeah it's good enough as it is I'm willing to take that compromise because otherwise I really like this bar particularly the fact that it's not as wide as if you are driving a bus so I like that on front of the stem we have the neat 3d printed Mac CAD Wahoo mount which I also use on the Ostro now so that's pretty neat yeah the handlebar of course is exactly the same as on the Ostro road bike so very similar feel of course this being a gravel bike it means that it has a bit more stack which is not really an issue it gives you a bit more confidence however mm, i did find the fit a little bit short compared to the other bike uh, which was not very comfortable so i'm going to change this stem for a 140 and that should probably take care of that um, the frame is pretty racy actually very close to a race bike uh, nice in corners soaks up the chatter pretty decently and it's just a more light nimble and racy feel compared to the open that one was quite stable and let's be honest a bit sluggish and a bit wooden this is more and much more in line with what i was expecting so pretty close to my road bike over there and I'm happy with that in general in terms of fit and feel everything is fine also with the round seat post a small diameter you do get a nice bit of compliance as well no seat post slip etc uh, or anything like that and I just measured out the position of the saddle to be exactly the same and it felt right at home from the first minute so very happy with that if we go further down we have the trick uh, silica titanium bottle cages pretty secure actually so that's a big plus on gravel uh, then further down to the cranks also a very similar setup to my road bike so the Alto 30 cranks these are actually 170 I went slightly longer just because the position is not so aggressive and you can use that bit of an extra torque in uh, steep off-road climbs so yeah that should probably be useful also on gravel you tend to change direction and in turn from roads uh, to gravel and yeah just it's a little bit more technical you need a couple more accelerations at least where i ride so yeah that's where a slightly longer crank helps gearing 5236 so traditional uh, semi-compact that's very popular now i like to use it for gravel because uh, they are still pretty big chain rings so pretty efficient and uh, the speeds i ride that usually um, even in the zone one ride i was in the big ring and the middle of the set most of the time so 
yeah, that's pretty much where you need to be if you want an optimized setup. With a small one by ring, for example, 40, you would be at the at the low end of the cassette, and that's just not optimal. You get bad chain line, you get a front uh, small ring and a small cog, you lose five watts easily just by that. So yeah, this is what I prefer. And on the bottom end, still have a very low gear, so it's a 36, 34. I was a bit afraid of the stepping of the cassette, but actually it's it's perfect. Um, the lower end is quite tight for road, that's that's all right, and off road, just not riding that smoothly anyway. So yeah, it works. Another concerning bit was the front mech. Ideally, I would have wanted an Altegra or the uh, Dura Ace Di2 front mech. A traditional one but since those were not available I went for the GRX version which firstly is said to be optimized for smaller chain rings and secondly it's optimized for different chain lines so it can sit further outboard by two and a half mil as I said earlier now these are standard road cranks with standard road chain rings and the chain line so I was a bit unsure whether it can go actually uh, far enough inboard to clear the chain in the smallest gear combination but luckily it does and it works perfectly it's just that I'm on the more inboard side of the adjustment but everything works uh, as you would expect and then secondly regarding the chaining size uh, this is around well four to eight teeth bigger than what it should be for this front neck but if you consider that time trial bikes um, use chain rings that are you know 58 56 with front necks that are optimized for 50 to 53 and it works so there's no reason it wouldn't work here another thing i have here is the chain catcher this i this is the kh pro i use it on all of the bikes that I have and are equipped with a front mech just for that peace of mind. Pedals are my trusty Speedplay Zero Paves in the titanium version. These are actually a pretty rare item. I got them a couple of years ago and I haven't used them much because I didn't have a proper gravel bike, but it certainly fits the bill for me here. I don't really ride terrain where I would need to get off and even if I do and I get a bit of mud on the shoe, I, I was riding them through the winter and I never had a problem with clipping in or clipping out. And it gives me the secure feel of the road shoe and yeah, I just prefer that, lower stack as well and more aero, so it's a bit of a marginal gain. For some races that require, I don't know, river crossings or creek crossings, something like that, to get off the bike and run I would probably change for a mountain bike pedal system because I still have the mountain bike shoes but for now this is just perfect uh, then further towards the bike yeah very thin chain stays or seat stays I mean massive chain stays for stiffness that's nice you I did glue on the rubber chain slap protector which on the gravel is particularly useful because it keeps the bike quite silent and of course i have the grx di2 2 by rear mech so this one is specific for 2 by has more teeth cap tooth capacity to deal with the front shifts and on it i have the slf motion cage as i said i actually took the cage apart and put some light grease in the bearings instead of the oil just to give it a bit more protection from the elements due to the nature of the use of this bike. Uh, the chain is a Dura-Ace chain treated with Silka uh, molten wax so that's possibly the as efficient as you can get. The cassette 1134 as I said is the AG800 so Ultegra level and the shifting actually I was quite surprised by how good it is of course I have the direct mount rear mech and it's DI2 so you would expect it 
it to be good but I don't know for some reason I actually felt that it might actually be faster than the race maybe that's subjective but definitely felt really damn good same for the front though so overall really happy with that uh, brake wise again pretty standard for me 140 MT 900 rotors front and rear just like on the road bike except here everything is brand new and not bedded in yet so the brake performance was well underwhelming to be honest so I have to definitely go to a hill and take a couple of hill reps another reason why I've chosen the MV SCS aero handlebar is the fact that they have proprietary well aero bar components that you can mount to them normally these are reserved for round bars but I didn't want a round bar because that's a pretty big aero penalty and I didn't want that of course me being me and yeah this is just a pretty neat solution and you get the complete package here so you get pads nice and sturdy carbon fiber by the way and the clamps which are also carbon fiber surprisingly it's a pretty intricate part actually and then we have some variable degree extensions as well so you can try different positions which I am definitely going to do so the reason why this is important is gravel races are pretty long most of them have clip-on aero bars allowed and you can just get a huge advantage by using them particularly at the latter parts of the race when you are solo or in a small group or if you try to go for the win uh, off the front so yeah that's something I definitely know a thing or two about so yeah that's something I want to exploit in gravel as well and um, yeah this is probably the best setup I could get of course these are standard 22.2 mil extensions so no reason why I couldn't use other ones I'm just going to test a few but yeah these seem to be pretty reasonable you can also internally route uh, shifters on there but since there's a limited number of connectors the i2 connectors in these levers mainly two which are taken up by the wiring itself it's not really a good possibility or it could be done but it would be unsightly and pretty complicated so yeah it will be without shifting for now maybe if i delve into this further then i will find a good way to do that so this is for the sharp end race day and for the leisurely days i have this lead out little handlebar bag where i can put some camera equipment and stuff so hopefully after a lot of requests lately i can film some of my own riding with that so if you'd like to know more about that and would be interested in that then let me know in the comments uh, yeah one more thing actually regarding riding on and off road i forgot to mention that this is obviously a clutch equipped rear mech and for now I rode with the clutch off which is better for efficiency and even when I rode some pretty rough stuff it wasn't really that problematic but I will need to experiment that experiment with that a bit more so yeah now that's really all of it about this bike for now I went into as much detail as possible so you can uh, help inform your own choices by this hopefully uh, if you need any other information then let me know in the comments uh, yeah so that's all for today thanks for watching and see you next time bye